Taking a peek into the world of graphic design for the first time can be a bit overwhelming. There's a lot to learn in terms of design principles, color theory, techniques, and branding in general. But if you want to create digital art, then you first have to familiarize yourself with the tools that we use as graphic designers. As of right now, the industry standard is the Adobe Creative Suite, with applications like Photoshop and Illustrator leading the way. These programs cost a lot of money, though, and they come with some pretty daunting hardware requirements. This can be a bit off-putting for someone who just has a casual passing interest in graphic design. And because of this, you may find yourself looking into free alternatives like Inkscape and GIMP and wondering what the differences are. In this video, I'll be comparing both applications, going over what their intended uses are, the pros and cons of each, and most importantly, I'll be helping you determine which one is best for you. This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this video we'll be doing a comprehensive comparison of both Inkscape and GIMP. The first thing you need to understand about Inkscape and GIMP is that, although they're both free and open source design applications, they're actually quite different. Comparing Inkscape versus GIMP is no way an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. They're two very different tools with very different intentions. Let's have a closer look. Despite the various different types of graphic formats that exist in the world, the types we'll be looking at in this video are raster and vector, and it's important to understand the differences between these two because they both represent the intended uses for Inkscape and GIMP. Rasterization is a digital imagery format where the image is made of individual colored boxes known as pixels, and it's the format that you're probably most familiar with. This is commonly used in things like photos, JPEGs, and other types of imagery you commonly see on the web. The raster format is preferred if you're going to do any kind of design work where you'll be editing photographs, but it's not ideal for things like illustrations and designs where you need clean lines and crisp edges. Vector graphics, on the other hand, are a different type of imagery format altogether. Vector graphics are not made of pixels. They're a series of coordinate points that dictate the properties of a graphic on an X and Y axis. This makes vector graphics ideal for things like illustrations and designs where you need to have crisp, definitive edges but it's not the ideal format for working with photos. Where Inkscape and GIMP come into play is that GIMP is intended for working with raster imagery, making it ideal for editing photos, and Inkscape is a vector graphics editor, making it ideal for creating digital illustrations. Let's take a more in-depth look at this. GIMP is a free and open source application that functions in the raster environment, and it's widely recognized as the go-to free alternative for Adobe Photoshop. GIMP, which stands for General Image Manipulation Program, was originally founded in 1995 by developers Spencer Kimball and Peter Mattis, who were both students at UC Berkeley at the time. According to Wikipedia, it was a semester-long project they were working on for the Experimental Computing Facility. As the years went by, GIMP continued to evolve as it saw lots of updates and new features from a bustling community of users and supporters. Believe it or not, GIMP was actually used to create the original Google logo in 1998. So keep that in mind for the next time that somebody wants to tell you that professional work can't be done with open source software. GIMP would be the ideal program for you if you're a photographer looking to retouch your photos. It allows you to adjust things like the white balance, the exposure, color saturation, and it allows for some complex color correction using curves and levels as well. It even has some cool features that allow you to do things like alter the shadows and highlights of a photograph, as well as the brightness and contrast. GIMP would also be ideal if you're just looking to crop an image, or maybe crop something from an image and remove the background. There's some really advanced tools and features that allow you to extract subjects from your photos, even if they have strands of hair and other fine details that make it difficult to define. You can also use GIMP to make some quick and easy corrections to subtle imperfections like skin blemishes and yellow teeth. You can change the color of someone's eyes, create different color variations for a product that you may be selling, and you can even restore color to black and white photos. And by the way, I have lessons demonstrating how to do all of these things on my channel if you want to check that out. GIMP isn't just used for editing photos, though. You can also use it to create some pretty cool effects to interact with your photos, like a sliced effect, mosaic collages, 3D text, and you can even turn yourself into a caricature if you'd like. Finally, GIMP is the right tool for you if you do a lot of sketching, painting, or airbrushing. It comes equipped with lots of brushes and presets attended for freehand drawing, whether it be by mouse or with a drawing tablet. 
You can even download brushes that were intended for Photoshop and use them in GIMP. And if you can't find the brush you're looking for, you can simply create a custom brush of your own. Although GIMP is a great tool, it's not the right tool for everything. A good example of this would be for designing things like logos, symbols, and other types of simple iconic illustrations. These things have lots of individual moving parts that you need to regularly move around and transform independent of the rest of the image. And the way that GIMP functions just isn't suitable for this sort of thing. It can technically be done, but it's kind of like using a fork to eat your cereal. You're making life a little more difficult for yourself than it needs to be because there's better tools that you can use. Another problem with using GIMP is that by nature, the designs you create will not be scalable. You can scale down without a problem, but if you try to enlarge your image, you're going to end up with pixelation. Or in other words, the individual colored boxes that make up the image are going to become more visible. This reduces the quality and resolution of the image. If you want a more dynamic graphic that can be scaled to fit many different sizes and applications, then it's best to stick with vectors. Let's talk a little bit about Inkscape now. Unlike GIMP, Inkscape doesn't work with pixels. It's a vector graphics editor, and it's widely recognized as the best free alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape started out as a code fork for Sodipodi, an open source vector graphics editor that was discontinued in 2004. The project was led by developers Ted Gould, Bryce Harrington, Nathan Hurst, and another developer who goes by the name Mental Guy. Inkscape has come a long way since then. They've added lots of useful features like live path effects, text manipulation, and various third-party extensions. The core functionality of Inkscape remains the same though, so you never quite feel like you have to relearn anything despite all of the additions and improvements. Inkscape would be the best tool to use for designing logos. Logo design is unique from other types of design because logos are typically used in a wider variety of contexts. A logo needs to be scaled up large enough to work as a sign and resized to fit various different dimensions. One of the benefits of working with vector graphics is that they can be scaled up infinitely without quality loss. This means that you can take your logo and enlarge it for use on a billboard or the side of a van without having to worry about pixelation. The vector format is the best platform for providing a logo with the versatility that it needs. Inkscape is also useful when it comes to creating simple illustrations like icons, buttons, and user interface. Inkscape makes it easy to work with simple shapes and objects that can be combined and transformed into whatever you'd like. You can also adjust the coordinate points of an object, otherwise known as nodes, to create your custom shapes. Another thing Inkscape is great for is creating digital illustrations, mascots, and characters with a cartoon-like style. This can technically be done with GIMP as well, but the vector format allows you to give your illustrations clean, crisp, and definitive lines, making Inkscape the ideal tool for this. And if you're creating characters for a 2D game design, then you're going to need the scalable benefit of working with vectors as well. Inkscape would also be the best tool for designing graphics for mobile applications like app icons, splash screens, buttons, and various other types of user interface. The vector format is great for this because it provides the versatility needed for these designs to fit any screen resolution without quality loss. Finally, the illustrative nature of Inkscape allows you to create some other unique types of designs like infographics, charts, and repeatable background tiles with an abstract pattern. One of the downsides of Inkscape is that you can only work with photos in a very limited capacity. Since Inkscape is intended for creating vector designs, there's really not much you can do with rasterized photographs. You can create clipping paths to remove the background, or even use them as a texture mask if you'd like, but that's about it. If you're looking to do any kind of extensive photo editing, you're better off sticking with GIMP. Another downside to using Inkscape is that it's not ideal for doing any kind of painting or sketching. There are tools that allow you to paint and sketch in Inkscape, but they should only be used in a limited capacity. The way that vector graphics works is that you'll put a lot of strain on your hardware if you create too many brush strokes and the file size will be enormous. Not only that, but you won't get all of the brush settings and realistic textures that you get with something like GIMP. The application that you should use when choosing between Inkscape and GIMP depends entirely on the type of design work you're doing. If you're working with a lot of photos, you should probably stick to GIMP. But if you're creating simple illustrations, then you're better off with Inkscape. One software is not objectively better than the other. It depends entirely on the context of what you're designing. 
If you're wondering if it's more important to learn one over the other, it's not. They're both equally important. As a graphic designer, you should familiarize yourself with both vector and raster design. Knowing how to work with both allows you to create some really dynamic designs combining elements from both Inkscape and GIMP, and it'll make you a more complete designer as well. If you'd like to learn more about Inkscape and GIMP, I have hundreds of tutorials on this channel that will walk you through each step in such a way that even a first-time user could follow along. I also have video courses for each application where I go through every tool and feature and explain how it all works. And that should do it for today's video. If you have any questions for which software you should use for a particular type of design that I may not have covered in this video, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.